Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Um, okay, so we are now in the week two. Okay, uh, previously uh, on week one, uh, we have done some uh, ice breaking, uh, some of the activities uh, to make you familiar with the um, terms. Okay, uh, based on the subject. Okay. Um, and last week, I recovered on the chapter 1, uh, which is on the introduction of uh, international business and also international trade. Uh, so this week, okay, kita akan proceed with the new chapter, which is uh, on chapter 2. And the title is The Cultural Environment of International Business. Okay. Okay, so I make it bigger. Okay, so when we talk about international business, okay, uh, of course, um, uh, previously I already explained to you uh, international business or international trade uh, is a business transaction that been done uh, across border, okay. across national border. So meaning to say you are doing business with other country, okay. So basically, uh, or normally, okay, company will do business with the neighbor's countries, which is the, within the same region. Okay, but sooner or later, the business will grow and you will be uh, entering into a new market. Okay, maybe sooner or later, the existing market already saturated, dah penuh, dah tepu. So, you need to capture to a new market, maybe to a different region. Uh, when we talk about a different region, of course, it is... Uh, slightly or uh, maybe a bit different with the culture that um, uh, with the culture in the home country okay so first and foremost I think you're not familiarized with the terms yet uh, but um, for your info home country is a country that is uh, or the origin country okay contohnya macam Proton kan, okay, Proton, the home country is Malaysia Or Peru Dua, the home country is Malaysia That is home country, negara asal Negara, uh, negara asal untuk company itulah home country kita And then kita dalam international trade juga Kita ada host country okay, Host country ni adalah Country that is um, uh, Country that is uh, uh, the country that the company choose in order to you uh, to run the international business negara luar bukan negara asal company tersebut uh, jadi so biasakanlah dengan term home country host country okay throughout the semester maybe I akan gunakan home country host country so uh, jangan confuse bila I cakap home country tu is the origin country of the company host country ni adalah the uh, existing company, uh, country yang company to penetrate in the international business okay uh, and once again kita akan uh, saling menggunakan perkataan international business and international trade but um, uh, maybe more on the international trade sebab kita punya course pun international trade and services uh, so the differences is once again I explain to you the okay International trade is all about uh, buying and selling uh, across national border. Maknanya hanya fokus on the export and import sahaja. And as for international business, it's a bigger scope compared to international trade. Whereby international business does consist of um, exporting, importing, licensing, franchising, joint venture, strategic alliances foreign direct investment, international investment, portfolio investment, and so on. So, meaning to say, all the business transaction, all the business um, strategy to enter to, uh, in, to an international market are within the scope of international business. As for the international trade, uh, it is only focusing on the buying and selling across national border, or also known as exporting and importing. Okay, so when we done, uh, when we do the international business across national borders, across region, okay, so of course you need to learn about the other cultures, okay, because this is the first thing that um, 
we were faced okay uh, meaning to say when uh, you found an agent or you found a partner at the host country dekat negara yang you nak pergi tu nanti okay of course you need to communicate with them so first thing first you need to understand their language you need to understand their business practice and so on so on this topic kita akan cover lah okay so that's why you need to learn about the cultural environment of international business okay so these are the learning objectives um, so throughout the subject kita akan belajar on the understand culture and cross culture risk okay kalau if you still remember last week um, kita dah uh, tengok an overview on what is an international business risk kita ada cross culture risk currency risk uh, commercial risk uh, political risk uh, so all the risk kita akan go through one by one throughout the semester okay as for this week kita akan tengok on the culture so that's why kita akan tengok on the cross cultural risk as well okay so learn the dimension of culture uh, describe the role of language and religion in culture describe culture's effect in international business learn models and explanation of culture understand managerial implication of culture okay so these are the learning objectives okay so these are the four risks of international business Okay, the cross-cultural risk. The, so, dalam cross-cultural risk ni, maknanya, this is why we need to learn about culture. Uh, because we want to avoid this kind of risk when we do the international business, specifically when you are doing international trade. Okay, so, uh, these are the risks that is always present. Okay, always there when you do the international trade. But it is manageable. So, okay, so that's why kita kena belajar. So, bila dah belajar, so we know. Um, kita dah boleh expect lah. Okay. Uh, how, uh, the culture of the host country that we want to penetrate lah. Okay. Okay, so the, these are the key concept. Okay, culture. Culture um, is the is the learn, shared and enduring orientation patterns in a society okay culture manifests itself through values uh, belief customs art and other product of human thought and work that characterize the people of a given society so culture ni adalah kepercayaan nilai-nilai um, budaya seseorang tu macam mana dia punya pakaian cara dia uh, cari dia makan, cari dia greeting and so on, okay and then cross cultural risk, macam yang kita dah tahu sebelum ni, is a situation or event where a cultural miscommunication put some human value at stake, okay, it arises in environment comprised of unfamiliar languages and unique values, belief and behaviour, uh, so ini adalah miscommunication lah yang akan terjadi uh, bila kita tak aware of the existing Uh, host country culture ok so dekat dalam uh, ok indahnya dalam apa international business ni kita dalam macam yang you all tahu dalam keseluruhan dalam apa in our planet lah there are about 195 uh, countries right so uh, and there are about 7 regions so each region each country have their own culture of course okay in fact uh, our malaysian culture is different with thailand different with indonesia different with brunei and singapore okay so um, that's why we need to learn about uh, this lah okay so for example uh, i noted here a uh, greeting uh, okay in term of greeting Okay, okay, macam kalau kita orang Malaysia, okay, hi, Assalamualaikum, kita normally say salam, hi, okay. As for China, in China, people in China, friend express thoughtfulness by asking each other whether they have had their meal yet. Uh, so, cara Chinese uh, greeting, dia akan tanya, dah makan ke belum? Okay, have you take your meal yet? Uh, macam tu. Okay, sekejap. Okay, sorry. Dia phone call. 
Okay, so Chinese tadi I cakap dia akan tanya macam uh, whether uh, you have take your meal yet. Nah, dah makan ke belum macam tu. Kadang-kadang kalau cik kita pun macam tu juga kan macam Hai, nak makan ke belum? Dari mana? Buat apa tu? Ha, tanya kan. Padahal nampak orang tu tengah betulkan basikal. Buat apa tu? Ha, tu yang kadang-kadang tak faham. Ha, bila orang tak faham tu macam No, nampak orang betulkan basikal macam Takkanlah tanya lagi kan, ha, tapi it's about greeting sebenarnya ha, Nak menegur kan, cari topik untuk tegur sebenarnya kan ha, So, bila tak faham, ha, tu yang boleh jadi miscommunication macam ha, Kan, fahamlah kan, okay And so, in Turkey, orang Turkey ha, Dia akan tanya, what is new with you? Ha, apa yang terbaru, okay, ha, any news, any update kan As for Japanese, dia akan uh, greeting, okay, buat ritual dia, uh, dia akan hide macam tu And then dia akan, um, dia akan say sorry sebelum dia letakkan telefon, uh, tu Japanese lah And then in term of food, okay, so tadi greeting ni kalau food pula, kalau contohnya pizza kan Kalau dekat Japan, pizza dia biasanya top with fish and seaweed, okay As for US, pizza dia penuh dengan high with meat, okay Then kalau dekat France, pizza dia uh, come with various cheeses Okay, penuh dengan cheese lah, France kan dia terkenal dengan cheese Okay, saya pun ada tengok um, satu rancangan program masakan Master Chef Australia Saya memang peminat tegar Master Chef Australia um, Yang mana sebab saya suka sebab bila, walaupun Master Chef Australia um, People yang entered into the contest It's not uh, purely from Australia Maknanya dia campur lah combine ada daripada uh, Middle East, ada yang daripada uh, uh, European countries uh, Macam tu lah, so dekat situ saya tengok uh, uh, Salah satu dia punya uh, Apa, challenge Okay, challenge dia adalah untuk Identify what kind of cheese is that Okay, so you need, dia dalam tu dia kena rasa cheese tu Okay, cuba teka cheese tu Jenis apalah Saya macam, saya tengok ha, Okay kan, saya tak tahu pula ada Banyak sangat, okay, more than 20 I think uh, Type of cheese kan uh, So, itulah culture Okay So, culture is constantly evolving and affect And is affected by globalization uh, So, culture evolve lah Okay, maknanya Kadang-kadang uh, macam kalau dulu mungkin orang uh, nak communicate kena pakai, kena call kan uh, Tapi sekarang ni mungkin dah tak payah call, macam whatsapp pun boleh, message tu dah sampai uh, Itu yang dimasukkan dengan culture evolving lah Okay so another, uh, another um, apa ni example, contoh, uh, contoh McDonald's okay McDonald's kalau in a global concept dia akan offer relatively standardized core menu worldwide ha, Biasanya uh, macam kita ada kat dalam McDonald's ada Big Mac, ada Mac Chicken Itu semua standard akan uh, menu yang ada setiap negara lah okay, Itu global okay, Tapi uh, McDonald's juga ada dia punya special menu according to the countries Contohnya kalau dekat Malaysia kita ada uh, Bubu McDonald's yang mana Bubu ni tak ada pun dekat uh, western country So ini kita panggil sebagai multi domestic Whereby the company variety offering to suit taste in local market Okay So tu about uh, culture lah Okay Then kita ada socialization Oh okay sebelum tu saya nak baca sikit note saya kat sini Cross cultural misunderstanding can run business deal hurt still or harm the corporate image imperative to develop sensitivity for cultural differences uh, jadi bila kita um, tak fokus betul-betul pasal culture kita akan um, our corporate image akan deteriorate lah maknanya orang macam kan, um, maybe citizen in that host country tak akan beli you punya produk sebab you sendiri tak hormat dia punya culture so very dangerous so that's why Uh, when you have um, cross-cultural savvy and also developing international cross-cultural competence then you will gain a competitive advantage for your company uh, Okay, so added value lah to the company um, Okay lah, kadang-kadang kan company ni dah bagus dah dia punya financial dia strong uh, human workforce dia dah bagus, teknologi dia dah bagus 
dah ready dah ni nak penetrate into the new market to one country okay that is um uh, macam uh, asing okay and then because of due to the uh, misunderstanding miscommunication especially on the cultural part okay the product is not accepted by the market so bahayalah okay so culture has proven difficult to identify and analyze but its effect on international business are profound okay Okay, so kat sini ada socialization, the process of learning the rules and behavioral patterns appropriate to one's uh, society. So, socialization ni adalah the process of learning lah. Macam kita belajar, uh, belajar tentang sesebuah uh, rules and behavioral pattern in one society. As for the acculturation, the process of adjusting and adapting to a culture other than one's own commonly experienced by expatriate workers ok so expatriate workers ni apa adalah uh, pekerja uh, foreigner uh, kita panggil dia expatriate uh, yang mana dia adalah uh, negara asal dia dekat luar dia datang negara kita untuk datang bekerja tu so, kita panggil dia sebagai expatriate so bila expatriate datang ke negara kita Of course, dia kena belajar, dia kena menyesuaikan diri, adjusting and adapting to our Malaysian culture. Kena hormat dan kena pay attention especially uh, on the religion part, for example. Uh, nanti kita akan go through one by one, okay? Okay, so culture is not right or wrong. It is relative. There is no cultural absolute. Different nationality simply perceive the world differently. Uh, so tak ada betul, tak ada salah, tak ada macam um, kenapa orang India bila dia cakap yes pun Indian eh, Indian uh, apa, country bila dia cakap yes pun dia giling kepala kan. Dia yes tapi yes kan. Yes dia punya yes giling I pun tak pandai nak buat. Uh, so tak salah pun. Tapi itu adalah dia punya culture. Okay. Not about individual behavior. It is about groups. It is a collective phenomenon of shared values and meaning. Okay, so maknanya culture ni bukannya sebab perangai seorang tu. Perangai, bila kita nampak seseorang tu perangai macam tu, uh, kita bukanlah uh, maknanya bukan sebab perangai dia macam tu. Dia adalah uh, tergolong dalam budaya tu. Uh, sebab budaya dia macam tu. Kita teng kita perhatikan. Dia orang mana eh? Kadang-kadang uh, kita macam tu kan? Kadang macam nampak orang yang macam pelik sikit perangai ke kan? Kita akan Try to understand lah orang mana. Oh orang Indonesia contoh. Oh patutlah orang Indonesia dia memang tak malu sikit kalau nak ambil barang orang ke apa kan. Contoh pengalaman saya lah kan. <laughs> macam saya ada apa. Aa, macam ada tanam pokok ke ada buah ke kan. Kadang dia, dia selamba je ambil kan. Aa, tapi kita macam tegur lah dia kata ni orang punya. Kena kalau nak boleh tapi ask for the permission semua kan. Aa, Dah banyak kali lah kena. So, saya assume macam tu lah. Okay, then uh, culture is not inherited. It derived from the social environment. We are not born with a shared set of value and belief. We acquire them as we grow up. So, maknanya culture ni adalah benda yang bukannya dalam gene kita. Maknanya kita lahir terus macam uh, lahir-lahir je terus pandai makan pakai tangan kanan. Uh, no, culture ni adalah benda yang diajar oleh uh, kita punya uh, family members uh, dekat sekolah for example uh, itu itulah yang dimasukkan okey okey intention element of culture so ini yang apa yang kita akan belajarlah throughout the apa topic ni cross culture ni tadi dimension language religion models and explanation manager implication Okay, culture as an iceberg. So, kalau you tengok kat sini kan. Okay. Um, saya rasa you all pun familiar kot iceberg tu apa kan. Okay, macam cerita dalam cerita Titanic lah. Uh, yang mana dia nampak ada ketulan ice. Tapi sebenarnya ice tu nampak dekat atas nampak macam pointed macam tu. Nampak macam kecil je. Uh, tapi sebenarnya dekat bawah-bawah tu besar dia punya ice dia. Jadi, culture ni pun macam tu juga. Culture as an iceberg yang mana as a... Um, kalau you tengok on top, high culture ni kan dekat uh, dekat sini. Okay, high culture ni. Cultural makeup 
that is visible ni benda yang kita nampak maknanya dari segi luaran kita tengok dia fine art dia macam mana drama dia literature music dia macam mana so kita nampak benda tu okay and then ada bawah sikit ada cultural makeup we are aware of kita aware kita tahu dah okay uh, dia uh, kalau contoh orang islam so sebab tu lah dia kena um, tu cover dia punya aurat cover dia punya apa ni tu pakai tudung and so on okay and then uh, in term of cooking lepas tu kita nampak macam uh, orang uh, uh, Indian kan dia suka makan spice uh, uh, jadi makanan dia banyak pedas for example full of spice and then dress dia macam mana so ini yang kita nampak okay yang atas ni yang kita nampak the problem is culture ni as an iceberg bawah ni memang tak nampak so apa yang kita tak nampak ni yang sangat bahaya okay culture makeup we are unaware of uh, yang tak nampak ni pula dikategorikan sebagai deep culture yang mana itulah yang paling penting sekali yang jangan langgar ha, macam tu okey contohnya macam greeting rituals okey uh, gender role believe on right versus wrong uh, macam macam lah okey so dia ni dia just bagi information lah Okay, so key dimension of culture, value. Apa yang dimaksudkan value? Ah, macam yang you all tahu lah, saya rasa kalau saya tanya dalam kelas pun, what is value? Nilai kan? Ah, biasalah tu kan. Ah, tanya pun dia akan translate untuk kita. So, value represent a person judgment about what is good or bad, acceptable or unacceptable, important or unimportant and normal or abnormal. Okay, so value common to Japan, North America and North Northern Europe include hard work, punctuality and wealth acquisition. Ah ini value dia lah maknanya sebab setahu saya kalau um, nilai-nilai values uh, macam contoh Japanese, okey biasanya dia akan working more than working hours lah. Uh, and saya ada dengar juga uh, saya ada terbaca juga uh, kalau dekat Japan a uh, misal katalah husband dia balik awal, isteri dia akan marah. Uh, isteri dia akan macam halau dia lah uh, marah sebab itu culture dia orang memang dia maknanya kalau suami dia balik awal tu mesti ada something wrong uh, either macam ada bad thing happen at office ke ataupun husband dia macam sakit tak sihat ke ataupun husband dia macam uh, macam penat ke malas kerja ke and so on so uh, this ada contohlah value okay and then attitude and preferences are developed based on values and are similar to opinion except that attitude are often unconsciously held and may not have a rational basis. So attitude mean how kita behave lah towards certain thing. Okay dan kita ada manners, custom and perception of space. Uh, okay manners and custom refers to ways of behaving and conducting oneself in public and business situation. They are present in eating habit. Uh, so contoh eating habit. Ada ada setengah uh, macam, yelah in term of eating habit, ada yang uh, culture dia makan pakai tangan, ada culture dia makan pakai spoon and fork, spoon and fork, ada culture yang makan pakai chopstick, uh, so this ada manners and custom lah, okay, okay. meal time, okay, ada culture yang dia makan uh, breakfast dia skip, normally dia akan skip, tapi dinner dia akan heavy, tapi ada culture yang wajib makan breakfast for example, uh, ada setengah culture pula dia jenis makan siang je malam dah tak makan for example working hours and holiday drinking and toasting okay appropriate behavior at social gathering for example like kissing handshaking bowing ah ni biasanya dekat western country uh, kalau you tengok tengok pun dia orang cara dia orang greeting pun dia orang akan greet, uh, uh, kissing okay handshaking bowing bowing ni ah uh, untuk uh, country like japanese Japanese lah dia akan bow, okay, gift giving, okay, the role of woman and much more, okay. And then kita ada uh, perception of space. Sekejap saya tengok saya tengok apa ni. Okay, perception of space reflect each other, reflect each culture's orientation about personal space and conversational distance. Okay, in term of space juga pun memainkan peranan juga. Okay, for example, uh, conversational distance is closer in Latin America than in Northern Europe or the US. 
uh, maknanya orang-orang dekat kawasan Latin Amerika biasanya bila dia uh, berbual, dia akan berbual dengan dekat. Okay, so kena hati-hatilah maknanya kalau you pergi dekat Latin Amerika ni, uh, you kena bear in mind that bila dia orang converse to you, communicate to you, dia akan cakap depan-depan. Uh, I mean, space tu, okay, space you dengan dia dekat. Ha, itu memang cara dia macam tu Alright Tapi dekat US Dia akan bagi you space lah ha, Untuk kita cakap Alright And then those who live in crowded Contohnya macam Japan Japanese and Belgium Okay Yang they tend to have uh, Smaller personal space requirement Than those who live in Russia or the US So contoh Japanese orang Belgium Biasanya Kalau you tengok Dia, dia punya rumah pun ha, Comel je Macam perabot dia pun Very minimalized uh, sangat minimal uh, Itu adalah dia punya culture Sebab dia memang dah biasa crowded uh, Dah biasa berada di tempat yang sempit Tempat yang kecil So dia dia happy je uh, So jangan judge Cakap rumah dia sempit ni Sebab mungkin dia miskin ke apa ke uh, Bukan macam tu Tapi uh, itu adalah dia punya culture dia Okay And then orang kalau tengok dekat US pun Kalau you tengok dia punya structure uh, Housing structure dia Di mana ada macam kita teras uh, Teras manjang rumah uh, Kiri kanan rumah, depan belakang rumah kan uh, Dekat US Dia memang rumah dia sebuah-sebuah And then ada space uh, So memang itu dia punya culture dia lah Dia dah biasa macam tu lah okay. And then apa lagi saya dekat sini Okay, Islamic countries okay. Close interaction between men and women Is discouraged uh, So in term of space So uh, Kita pun tahu kan sebab kita pun Islamic countries uh, Kalau bercakap antara lelaki dan perempuan Biasanya kita akan ada space lah uh, So itu in term of the perception of space Okay, uh, ruang Okay, ruang untuk untuk bila kita nak bercakap dengan seseorang lah Okay Okay, then perception of time Alright, time dictates expectation about planning Okay, scheduling, profit stream and what constitute tardiness in arriving for work and meetings. Okay, so in term of um, dari segi planning ni, okay, yang ni kan planning, scheduling ni. Okay, ada countries yang dia ada longer planning horizon. Okay, maknanya dia akan dari segi planning tu dia akan merancang sesuatu uh, beyond than 10 years. Maknanya lama perancangan dia tu, okay. Contohnya Japan ni, they prepare strategic plan for a decade. Uh, lama. Okay. Uh, strategic plan dia mengambil masa ber, berdekat. Uh, so, dia memang macam tu. Memang jenis yang long term planning punya orang. Okay. Uh, lepas tu kita ada, yang first tadi longer planning horizon. Number tu kita ada uh, shorter. Shorter planning horizon. Shorter planning horizon ni untuk western country. Uh, countries lah okay, Biasanya dia akan Merancang strategi, strategic plan dia For few years saja. Macam contoh kita Western country ni Biasanya dia rancang For 3 to 5 years je lah okay, As compared to Japanese Dia akan rancang In the longer time uh, okay, Tapi untuk uh, Japan, um, Western countries Dia akan uh, Choose untuk Have shorter planning Horizon Okay, and then we have monochronic. Okay, monochronic ni apa? A rigid orientation to time in which the individual is focused on schedules, punctualities, time as a resource, time is linear, time is money. For example, people in the US are hurried and impatient. Ah, so, kena bear in mind when you do business with people, uh, with American people, okay, Dia memang sangat-sangat tak sabar. Dia memang uh, jenis yang uh, punctual, jenis yang time is money, hurry, okay. Itu bukan sebab dia macam, dia macam, memang itulah dia. Uh, memang begitulah perangai mereka, monochronic. Uh, so, kena, um, kena, kena bear in mind je lah, kena sentiasa beringat, okay. And then kita ada polychronic. Polychronic ni a flexible, dia kontras lah dengan monochronic tadi. A flexible non-linear orientation to time in which the individual takes a long-term perspective. Time is elastic, long delays are tolerated before taking action. Punctuality is relatively unimportant. 
relationship as a value example Africa, Africa country, Latin America and Asia. Ah, ni macam kita lah ni kan. Ah, janji pukul berapa, datang pukul berapa kan. Dia punya on the way dia tu, ah, on the way, on the way. Ah, on the way punya baru gerak daripada katil nak ke bilak air. On the way juga tu. Ha, macam tu. Jadi, um, memang itulah dah budaya kita. Ah, so, bila saya pun belajar belajar pasal kaca, belajar pasal IB ni, oh semua saya faham, oh no wonder lah kan. Kadang janji yang kawan pukul 2, aa, tapi belum tentu lagi muncul, aa, sama lah kat mana-mana program pun. Aa, macam kat, saya kat UMK ni, program tu kata, okay kumpul pukul 8, dah hati alam, si start pukul 8 setengah. Tak juga, start pukul 9 contoh anak perempuan. Aa, so, so, jadi lepas tu, saya pun macam, okay. Ha, so, bila kita bila kita dapat tahu program tu kan dekat ni kena ada pukul 8, so kita pun next program lah. Kita pun macam, alam, mesti pukul 9, lepas tengah pukul 9 ni kan. Ha, so, kita pun stand by lah. Lepas tengah tu baru sampai, sekejap lagi, eh dah start pula. Ha, lepas tu dia pula judge kita. Tak 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 patuh masa and so on kan. Ha, so, itulah. Okay, culture-nya. Okay, bestnya orang Malaysia ni kan. Okay. okay, next is symbolic and material production. Simbol eh. Simbol can be letters, figures, colors and other characters that communicate a meaning. Example, include flag, anthem, seal, monument and even historical myth. Okay, so saya kat sini ada contoh macam simbol uh, the cross. Okay, cross in the main symbol of Christianity. Ah, uh, Orang Christian kan dia uh, ada cross kan. Okay, and then red star was the symbol of the former Soviet Union. Lepas tu, uh, contoh macam company pun uh, ada simbol masing-masing macam Nike dia ada standard swoosh tu. Lepas tu, barang Apple pun ada logo Apple. So, okay, Cadbury dia ada colour dia kan contoh. So, ini uh, contoh yang ada untuk perception uh, setiap negara tentang color. Okey, contoh color uh, red color dekat Europe, Europe and North America, normally they assume red color is about danger, stop, anger, love and passion. Uh, okay, but in China, okay, they assume red color as a good luck, joy, celebration and long life. Kalau Japanese, celebration uh, Maybe it could be celebration, it could be danger, it could be anger. Okay, and for Middle East, danger, anger and also evil. Okay, so kat sini beza. Color pun dah lain-lain perception. Okay, untuk color white, purity, peace, bright. Ha, sebab selalunya bridesmaid je, uh, brides je pakai baju color putih. Ha, tapi kita kalau kat Malaysia, um, time nikah pakai baju putih, lepas tu pakai baju Uh, tukar kali lain kan, nah, maknanya kita tak associate with the bright lah maknanya kalau kalau putih tu tak semestinya uh, pengantin kan, uh, macam tu lah okay, tapi in China white ni sebagai morning, death, humility uh, berkabung pula kan, uh, sama juga dekat Jepun sama juga dekat Middle East and then color black, okay, death, evil, morning uh, dekat uh, belah western country pula Kali hitam dia sebagai tanda morning. Okay, tanda dia berkabung. Uh, as for China, black is evil. Color for young boys. Okay. And then, uh, maknanya nanti kalau you nak pergi pasangkan barang dekat China. Okay, you banyakkan lah. Kalau you target kepada young boys, you banyakkan uh, baju color, color hitam. Uh, sebab tu adalah color for young boys kan. And then ada green, money, safety, luck, prosperity. Untuk China, dia uh, anggap green ni sebagai youth, growth, adultery. Okay. And then uh, life, energy, uh, freshness, youth. Uh, lepas tu Middle East, strength, love, fertility. Lepas ada blue, blue colour, sadness, calm, trust, masculinity. China, uh, strength, power, fertility. Untuk Japan, purity, cleanliness. Untuk Middle East ada protective. So, ini adalah perbezaan warna untuk setiap negara lah. Okay. So, tak apa. Ini hanya untuk you punya information sahaja. Okay. Alright. So, next.
kita nak tengok on the social structure, social structure, social structure. Okay, sekejap. Tepinya sikit. Okay. Social structure is the pattern of social arrangement and organized relationship that characterize a society. Okay. Ada maknanya dekat dalam society kita ni, dekat dalam masyarakat kita ni, dia ada structure dia. So, society ni is organized as individual, family, reference groups, social stratification and also social mobility. Okay, dekat dalam PowerPoint slide ni dia sangat-sangat uh, simple. Kalau you all nak jot down pun boleh, saya boleh uh, bacakan lah. Okay, uh, but this is recording so you boleh play and pause lah uh, between that. Uh, okay, so the first one is individuals. Okay, structure yang, yang pertama adalah individuals. Okay, um, kita baca sikit eh. Western cultures emphasize individualism okay and individual success thus social status often is determined by individual performance okay this explains the high degree of worker mobility and entrepreneurial activity typical in western society okay so maksudnya dekat sini ada uh, setengah negara setengah culture yang dia sangat Emphasize on the individualism Maksud individualism ni adalah Bekerja secara Berseorangan Aa, Maknanya dia memang uh, Dia prefer kerja seorang-seorang Daripada bekerja di dalam Group berkumpulan Dan reward dia pun Dia bagi reward based on individual Siapa yang rajin Based on individual punya uh, Performance Dia akan bagi reward based on that Uh, itu untuk individual Okay um, Okay Tapi Kontra dengan kita punya uh, Asian countries Okay Untuk Asian countries oh, tepi. Untuk Asian countries uh, Kita biasanya bukan individual punya type lah Kita adalah Collectivism Yang mana kita Tend to work in a group uh, So kalau pergi mana-mana pun Biasanya Contoh nak pergi tandas pun, boleh teman ke pergi toilet, aa, nampak tak? Aa, tak boleh nak bersorangan, pergi toilet pun nak teman contoh. Aa, tapi jangan marah, itu adalah kita punya culture. Alright. Then, aa, number two is family. In culture, where the immediate and extended family hold particular important in the nation social structure, The family plays a substantial role in the formation and structure of business activity. Contohnya macam kalau uh, uh, dia punya family dia ada peranan yang penting. Um, okay, contohnya ada uh, business family, family own business, family run businesses. Uh, biasanya dia akan dikenali uh, sebagai keluarga siapa. Uh, contoh macam dekat China lah. Uh, uh, saya... We are from Lee Group, Lee Company. Uh, so, tahulah, oh, ni adalah family business. Um, apa? Family Lee, for example. Uh, we are from uh, Mehua Company, for example. So, uh, itu adalah family basis lah. Okay? Dekat China. China biasanya dia uh, banyak family basis. Dia banyak uh, family business. Okay? And then number three, kita ada reference group. Okay, in some cultures, a person's social status is defined by group or employer affiliation. Ah, okay, untuk reference group ni pula, uh, dia macam, dia identify diri dia uh, wakil kepada setengah company. Contohnya, uh, hi, uh, I'm Johannes and I come from Petronas, Malaysia, for example. Uh, so, itulah reference group, okay. Contoh dekat Japan. Okay, objective and strategy are typically decided by group rather than by individual managers. Tokyo businessman will identify himself by the company he works for rather than his function or job title at that firm. Ha, jadi dia akan identify diri dia macam uh, Hi, uh, I'm Johannes. Uh, I come from uh, Petronas uh, Malaysia contoh. Uh, dia cakap macam tu. Dia tak cakap pun, hi I'm Yohanis, I'm the lecturer uh, in faculty ni 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 uh, Dia tak dia tak detail dia punya apa uh, Dia punya job title tapi dia just focus 
on dia punya company itu adalah reference group dan kita ada social stratification ataupun kita panggil sebagai strata ha, okey yang mana ada kelas-kelas dia okey individuals are classified within social layers ataupun class depending on their occupation income level or family history so contoh macam Malaysia dulu pun ada buat uh, social stratification um, saya rasa sekarang dah tak ada dah term tu tapi uh, kita masih menggunakan pakailah sebab term tu um, macam menarik juga contoh B golongan B40 golongan M40 and also golongan T20 so it is ada social structure uh, dia classified kan kita based on the income kita per year and then uh, based on apa tadi um, occupation pekerjaan kita and also family history Okay, then kita ada social mobility. Social mobility is with which a person can move up within social strata. Yang ini sistem kasta lah, kita panggil caste system. Okay, biasanya sistem kasta ni dekat mana? Ha, dekat negara India. Ha, in a caste system, a person social status is determined by birth. And he or she has little opportunity for social mobility. Maknanya kalau dia dilahirkan di dalam kasta yang rendah saya tak uh, dulu saya ada uh, belajar kasta kasta dalam India tak silap saya yang last kali saya tak ingat lah I'm not sure tapi macam kasta paria paria uh, paria kot kasta paria kot yang paling rendah kalau you were born in the kasta yang paling rendah tu so susah untuk you change kepada kasta yang kepada kasta yang tinggi but you are born with it. Tapi kalau you kasta yang paling tinggi tak salah saya kat India Brahmin kot. Uh, if I'm not mistaken lah. Okay. Uh, Brahmin ni kasta yang paling high level lah. Okay. So tak mungkin you akan jadi kasta yang paling rendah pula dekat dalam uh, apa family atau dekat dalam community. Uh, so dia limitkan social mobility tu lah. Okay. Next. E, this is uh, apa statistik literacy rate in selected countries percentage of those who can read so dekat dalam culture pun ada involved with education a certain countries yang uh, fully emphasize on the education sectors ada countries yang mungkin the lack of uh, infrastructure lack of um, financial punya um, apa ni capital to focus okay to spend on the education so sebab itulah berlakunya literacy rate tu berbeza untuk setiap negara literacy rate ni adalah uh, kadar ke, uh, kadar boleh baca seseorang lah uh, contoh kat sini kalau paling tinggi yang boleh paling boleh baca adalah China lepas tu ada Saudi Arabia, Mexico followed by South Africa, Brazil yang paling lowest literacy rate is from uh, Nigeria, Mali, Afghanistan. Okey ni mungkin sebab dia punya infrastructure lah. Uh, jadi kalau you nak uh, venture into education punya uh, business, uh, kena aware lah which country yang paling exercise on education, which country yang no border about the education. Okey. And then language is as a key dimension of culture, okay, the mirror or expression of culture, okay, language ni memang mirror lah, dia memang bila kita nak cakap dengan orang tu, bila kita nak start communicate, biasanya kita akan menggunakan uh, language, okay, linguistic proficiency is a great uh, asset in international business, so bila you ada uh, kemahiran untuk bercakap more than two languages, okay, uh, so you ada added value, added value lah ok, you boleh macam boleh cakap French, boleh cakap Chinese, uh, boleh cakap English, lepas tu boleh cakap uh, Japanese uh, ok, so itu added value lah untuk company you ok, then language has both verbal and non-verbal, ok, untuk verbal adalah yang kita cakap lah ok, untuk non-verbal unspoken biasanya adalah facial expression and gesture ok 
So kita tengok untuk uh, verbal Okay there are nearly 7000 active languages Including over 2000 in each of Africa and Asia region Okay banyak ada 7000 uh, bahasa Okay throughout the world uh, So nanti kalau you punya assignment tu nanti Bila bahagian culture kena identify lah Okay country yang you dah pilih tu language dia apa uh, Okay sebab kat sini pun ada tulis banyak language dia Okay So, these are the world rank uh, untuk language, most common primary languages in the world. Okay, so the world rank number one is Mandarin Chinese. Okay, language of Mandarin Chinese uh, approximate about 900 million native speakers that speak Mandarin Chinese. And the countries that normally speak uh, Mandarin Chinese is China, Singapore. Okay, followed by Spanish. Uh, so, maknanya... Selain pada you nak belajar China, Mandarin Chinese, uh, you juga boleh belajar juga Spanish. Ha? Sebab Spanish ni adalah second world rank language. Uh, okay, biasanya digunakan di countries um, apa ni uh, apa Southern America, okay, Argentina, Mexico, Spain, uh, Spain ni kat Europe lah. Then ada uh, English, okay, so country like Australia, Canada, UK, US and then ada Hindi Arabic, eh Hindi Arabic, Hindi language from India and then ada Arabic language from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, UAE, okay and then ada Portuguese, ada Bengali, Russian, alright, Japanese, Punjabi, German, Javanese, okay mungkin sebab uh, Javanese ni uh, dia sebab negara dia besar, penduduk dia ramai, uh, jadi dia listed lah compare to Malay apa Malay language kan tak listed dekat sini okey so ada kalau ada masa ada masa free tu kan ha, try lah belajar ha, tapi kadang-kadang kita tak belajar pun kita macam layan banyak cerita Korea layan banyak cerita ha, apa ni cerita Spain ke cerita France ke kita boleh agak dah ha, for power kan ha, macam tu kan Okay, dah, saya tak nak start lah Nanti belum saya mengarut nanti Okay, sekejap Ada apa-apa tak yang saya nak bagi tahu? Okay, idiom Idiom is an expression Whose symbolic meaning differ From its literal meaning You can't understand it simply by knowing What the individual words mean Ah, uh, Ini adalah idiom ni macam uh, Perkataan uh, Ayat yang kita cakap tapi bila kita macam cakap dekat orang luar dia akan direct translate nanti takut dia direct translate tu jadi lain ah contohnya kat, kat Australia dia cakap the tall poppy gets cut, gets cut down ah tapi kalau kita baca translate dia um, apa ni ah, apa poppy yang tinggi ni kena dah kena potong ke ah rupanya bukan nak cerita pasal kena potong tu ah nak cerita pasal important of not being showy or pretentious Kat Thailand pula, if you follow older people, the dogs won't bite you. Ha, lepas tu kalau kita direct translate kan, ha, nanti macam takut dengan anjing kan. Tak nak lah follow orang orang muda, ha, kita follow orang tua je. Nanti anjing tak gigit kita. Ha, padahal maksud dia adalah wisdom. Okay, as for Japan, dah ada the nail that stick out get hammered down. Okay, ha, yang ni pasal paku pula dengan hammer. Ha, ini rupanya cerita pasal group conformity. Jadi idiom ni pun kena ambil tahu jugalah maknanya bila kita bercakap dengan orang luar, dengan foreigner, dengan orang yang kita tak kenal, bila dia cakap tu kadang-kadang kita akan translate kan kan. Ah ha, tapi ada certain things dia, dia gunakan idioms. Ha, macam dalam kalau bahasa Melayu pun ada kan macam um, apa lah kita panggil kan sebulan bahasa. Ah um, apa kan? Lupa dah dalam bahasa Melayu tu Apa term digunakan um, uh, Berakit-rakit dahulu Berakit-rakit ke hulu Berenang-renang kemudian uh, So kalau kita cakap dekat orang luar tu Kenapa pula nak berakit ni kan uh, Kenapa pula nak berenang ni Kita kan kat office ni kan uh, Macam itulah lebih kurang Itu adalah idiom okay? Apa kan dalam bahasa Melayu Kalau dalam kelas ni saya boleh tanya you You boleh jawab Saya tak ingat uh, dalam bahasa Melayu Maafkan saya, Encik BBM. Okay, Blunders International Advertising. Ah, ini salah faham lah. Okay, benda-benda yang 
um, miscommunication dengan idiom uh, bila dia macam kena gunakan uh, slogan macam Pepsi ni kan come alive with Pepsi uh, sebenarnya come alive maksudnya kita macam uh, macam be uh, macam energetic dengan Pepsi kan alive okey tapi dekat negara lain cakap come out of the grave with Pepsi uh, macam keluar daripada kubur uh, lepas tu Pepsi bring your ancestors ancestors back from that uh, Pepsi boleh hidupkan orang mati pula uh, so these are the blunders in international advertising salah faham okey meaning differences between US and British ah uh, antara US dan U, US dan juga UK punya English pun berbeza uh, macam contoh dekat sini sharp Uh, kalau US maksud sharp ni smart, clever, you're very sharp uh, nanti, nanti kita jangan sharp, hmm, tajam ke aku ni kan uh, Macam tu Okay, so these are the differences lah Contoh, okay And then kita ada non-verbal communication Alright, so tadi verbal uh, These are the non-verbal communication So non-verbal communication is unspoken and include facial expression, gestures, okay, body movement, eye contact, physical distance, posture and other non-verbal signals. Okay, contoh ada kat sini uh, sound, okay, uh, eye movement, head movement, okay, head movement, posture, facial expression, hand movement. These are the non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication ni pun uh, berbeza-beza di antara Uh, kaca ok lepas tu kita masuk on the religion agama ok a religion is a system of common belief or attitude regarding on being or system of thought that people consider sacred, divine or the highest true also the associated moral values tradition and rituals ok Uh, religion influence culture and therefore business and consumer behavior. Okay, example, uh, the Protestant work ethic, okay, emphasize hard work, individual achievement, and understand that people can control their environment, their underpinning for the development of capitalism. Okay, contohnya, kalau, okay, lepas tu contoh lagi, hmm. macam kalau kita pergi ke, apa, Uh, negara Islamic religion pun kena bear in mind lah kita tak boleh nak jual benda-benda yang haram uh, kena uh, make sure you ada halal certificate uh, benda ni sangat penting lah uh, ini yang kita kena ambil tahu alright so this ada uh, contoh untuk world religion ok nanti sekejap eh saya tunjuk yang ini ok so kalau you tengok color ye, color color cream eh uh, color cream ni adalah Uh, country yang mengamalkan Christianity, okay. Terus kita ada color green, country yang mengamalkan Islam. Terus ada color uh, macam merah ni, uh, Buddhism, okay. Terus ada Hinduism yang light green ni, okay. And nature religion, uh, nature religion pun ada macam African country, uh, dia, um, yelah, dia agama dia mungkin dia percaya kepada matahari ke, percaya kepada nature lah ok role of religion in islamic society islam is the basis for government legal and social system as muslim view god's will as the source of all outcome they are relatively fatalistic and reactive uh, sebab apa-apa yang kita contoh kalau you um, buat kerja dengan orang islam ni kita bila kita sebagai orang islam ni kita macam kita hanya mampu berusaha dan Allah yang menentukan. Ha, jadi bila kita nak janji sesuatu tu kita akan cakap insya Allah. Ha, so, ha, so tapi dalam in business perspective benda tu tak bagus lah. Makni, bukan tak bagus. Dia kata macam kita ni ha, macam tak firm lah dengan keputusan kita. Tapi kita bukan tak firm. Cuma kita just nak cakap yang um, kalau Allah benar, kalau Allah izinkan benda tu akan terjadi. Ha, Okay, jadi sebab itulah ada certain company yang rasa macam a bit difficult to make a deal with uh, Arab countries uh, yang practice Islam ni sebab um, apa dia tak ada macam kata putus. Uh, okay, susah nak bagi kata putus lah. Alright, 
So Islam Hollywood pun dia uh, kita pun tahu kan uh, tak boleh minum alkohol, uh, berjudi, okey, unsur-unsur riba ataupun benda-benda yang menonjolkan mata. Uh, okey. So kena bear in mind lah okey untuk business. Okay, for example here, Nokia launch a mobile phone that shows Muslim the direction towards Mekah. Okay, then Heineken roll out the non-alcoholic mug drink which is Pyrus. Uh, Heineken kan dia alcoholic punya um, company. Uh, so, dia nak cater into the countries yang practice Islam ni, dia keluarkan non-alcoholic mug. Right. So, in business, culture affect managing employees, communicating and dealing with distributors and other business partner, how the negotiating and structuring business venture, developing product and services, preparing advertising and promotional material, preparing for international trade fair, and also interacting with, color, with current and potential customers. Actually, uh, banyak lagi lah nak cerita pasal religion tapi um, mungkin kalau saya boleh sharekan notes ke nanti tapi uh, ini hanya untuk uh, general knowledge lah. Alright. So, saya nak tengok notes, saya punya notes sekejap. Okay. Model and explanation culture. Culture metaphors. Okay, culture metaphors. Metaphora. Tadi metaphora apa? Okay, culture metaphor refer to a distinctive tradition or institution strongly associated with a society. A guide to deciphering attitude, values and behaviour. Okay, contohnya macam American football. Okay, American football uh, macam yang dia main macam ala-ala rugby tu kan? Tapi dia pakai... Uh, Baju yang itulah ada pet-pet tu semua Represent systematic planning, strategy, leadership and struggling against rivals Okay, lepas ada Swedish Tuga Swedish Tuga ni adalah rumah lah sama kote Represent the love oh oh, the love of nature and desire for individualism in Sweden Lepas ada Spanish bullfight Reflect the importance of ritual style, courage and pride in Uh, Spain, uh, tu metafora je lah Okay, maksud sim, uh, Simbolik meaning uh, Untuk setiap satu lah Okay, next kita nak Cover On the E.T. Hall's High and Low Context Culture E.T. ni siapa? Okay, renowned anthropologist Name Edward T. Hall Okay, nama dia Edward T. Hall Sebab tu dia E.T. Edward T. Hall Distinguish national cultures based on low context and high context. Okay, so ini daripada perspektif uh, daripada uh, anthropologist lah. Anthropologi ni dia yang mengkaji uh, tentang manusia, tentang uh, budaya sebelum-sebelum ni. Okay, so dia, dia kena pasti ada dua. Low context culture and also high context culture. As for the low context culture, rely on explicit Explanation with emphasize on spoken words. Ha, maknanya low context culture ni dia kena cakap dengan dia cakap direct. Kalau you tak nak cakap no. Jangan cakap. Depend lah tengok keadaan macam mana. Kalau I sempat, I pergi. Ha, tu biasa bila kita nak nak avoid kan. Ha, kita cakap macam tu. Tapi ha, untuk ha, low context culture ni biasanya dia dia tak suka macam pusing-pusing. Dia suka macam cakap direct je dengan dia. Okay. Such culture emphasize clear, efficient, logical delivery of verbal messages. Communication is direct. Agreements are concluded with specific legal contracts. Ah, ni untuk low context culture. Contohnya selalunya uh, low context culture ni adalah di sekitar Northern Europe, North America, ah uh, dan juga ah uh, di situ lah. Okay, nanti kalau ada contoh lagi saya baca. Okay, untuk high context culture pula dia kontra lah dengan low context culture. Kalau low context culture tu dia fokus on spoken words, spoken on verbal message. Communication is direct. Ah, uh, Untuk high context culture pula, dia emphasize on uh, non-verbal or indirect language. Ah, uh, 
ni yang saya cakap, cakap pusing-pusing tadi tu Communication aims to promote smooth, harmonious relationship ha, Kita communicate tu just macam nak nak biar hati ha, Macam cakap ha, Bukan yang nak cakap macam ha, You pergi ke tak? Ha, Tengok lah dulu macam mana Tapi depends lah kan ha, Kalau saya sempat saya pergi Tapi itulah ha, You macam mana? You, 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 you Kalau you pergi sana ha, You pergi naik apa? Ha, dia macam ada pusing Pusing kan ha, Tapi sebenarnya bila pusing tu Membantu untuk smooth uh, Harmonious relationship Nampak macam kita care dengan dia Semua kan ha, Okay Star culture Prefer a polite Face saving star that emphasize a mutual sense of care and respect for others. Care is taken not to embarrass or offend others. Uh, okay, so biasanya um, country yang ada high context culture ni seperti Japanese, okay, Japan, China. Uh, biasanya dekat uh, East Asian country lah, kawasan Asia. Alright, so dapat eh. Low contact culture dan juga high contact culture Low contact culture ni dia Fokus kepada spoken words Fokus kepada uh, verbal message Communication is direct Untuk high contact culture pula dia fokus kepada Non-verbal macam uh, Facial expression ke macam contoh Kalau kita boleh nampak kan Kalau orang tu tak nak dia macam Kalau nak tu eh jom jom ha, Cari saya tu eh eh boleh 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 ha, Macam tu kan so kalau tak nak tu Nak cakap tak nak macam takut kan Nak nak jaga hati, face saving ah, nak, Kita cakap face saving ni nak jaga hati lah um, Nak jaga hati tak nak bagi dia malu Kita tolak permintaan dia So kita cakap, nak pergi tak? Hmm. Ah, so faham-faham lah ah, Kalau macam tu okay? Alright, ini adalah contoh untuk uh, Yang tadilah high context culture Dan juga low context culture Tu saya cakap kalau high context culture Biasanya dia macam dia non-verbal lah Dia communicate tu untuk uh, uh, apa Relationship Untuk menyatakan yang dia care Okay so contoh negara yang high contact culture Chinese uh, uh, apa China, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, Arab, Spanish Spain, Italy Okay dan untuk low contact culture pula Kita ada German uh, Germany, Swiss, Scandinavian Scandinavian ni negara macam Uh, Denmark uh, Apa lagi Ada tiga Denmark, Netherlands Sekejap Okay Denmark, Norway dan juga Sweden Itu adalah Scandinavian countries Denmark, Norway dan juga Sweden Okay Right so next is Kalau tadi adalah Uh, ET Hall uh, High and Low Context Culture Yang ini pula dari daripada Anthropologist juga Daripada uh, apa, 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 uh, Dash Dash Anthropologist daripada Gate Hofstad okay. Gate Hofstad conducted One of the early empirical studies Of national cultural trait Collecting data on the values and attitudes of 116,000 employees at IBM Corporation Representing diversity in terms of nationality, age and gender Okay, Hostet ni dia menjalankan research lah dekat IBM company IBM company ni memang ramai lah dia punya employees dia ha, Kalau kat sini pun kalau tengok about 116,000 employees uh, From different background, different culture, different countries So Based on dia punya um, research, so they find out there are six dimension. Uh, dalam culture ni ada uh, uh, enam. Okay, six typology of national culture. So kita tengok one by one. The first one is individualism versus collectivism. Uh, kalau you nak salin, salin lah. Okay, the first uh, apa ni? Uh, the first dimension in the hosted typology of national culture is Individualism versus collectivism Okay so Individualism versus collectivism Refers to whether a person Primarily function as an individual Or within group Ah, Okay Kalau uh, um, Apa ni ada setengah Culture atau ada setengah orang Dia suka uh, react In an individual Ada setengah pula react within a group Okay, so kalau orang yang react in, in uh, react as an individual kita panggil dia sebagai 
individualism. Okay, so in individualistic society, each person emphasizes his or her own self-interest. Competition for resources is the norm. Individuals who compete best are rewarded. Okay, so example of countries that have high individualism uh, characteristic are Australia, Britain, Canada and the United States. So meaning to say bila you pergi dekat country ni, uh, you janganlah buat banyak buat group activity sebab mereka adalah uh, golongan uh, individualistic society ataupun kita panggil dia sebagai individualism yang mana biasanya dia sangat uh, kompetitif, dia bersaing untuk mendapatkan sesuatu lepas tu dia fikirkan pasal diri dia, dia tak, tak kisah pun pasal orang lain uh, I mean uh, dia bekerja dalam group lah maknanya kalau dia nak buat sesuatu tu dia tak fikir macam contohnya macam uh, uh, ok ada kerja ni Okay, terus buat. Ha, dia tak ada macam nak tunggu orang tu buat ni dulu baru nak buat lah apalah. Ha, tak. Okay. Then kontra untuk individualism adalah collectivism. Okay. In collectivist society, ties among individuals are important. Maknanya uh, individu between individu dia tie. Okay. Uh, saling bergantung antara satu sama lain. Business in conducted in a group context. Life is fundamentally cooperative experience, conformity and compromise help maintain harmony. So example, uh, country that have uh, high uh, characteristic of collectivism are China, Panama, Japan and also South Korea. So country-country ni dia sangat suka bekerja dalam berkumpulan. Okay, okay second Second dimension is power distance. Okay, apa tu power distance? Power distance describe how a society deal with inequality in power that exists among people. Ha, jarak. Okay, uh, uh, macam okay, contoh high power distance society exhibit big gap. Okay, ada gap jarak between the weak and powerful. Uh, in firm, top management tend to be autocratic. Giving little autonomy to lower level employees. Ha, tengok ni. Example countries yang high in power distance are Guatemala, Malaysia, Philippines and several Middle East countries. So high power distance ni maknanya berlakunya jurang yang sangat besar di antara uh, golongan yang powerful dengan golongan yang uh, lemah. Uh, contohnya dekat dalam company, uh, kita ada top management kan. Uh, Macam kadang-kadang kita bekerja dalam company tu kita tak pernah pun jumpa top management ataupun tak pernah pun bercakap dengan top management. Ha, itu maknanya uh, negara kita ni um, uh, practice high power distance uh, sebab kita respect dia, dia sebagai orang atasan kita jadi kita tend to macam uh, macam format macam tu macam professional lah. Ha, tak ada nak macam nak tanya khabar ke apa ke uh, sebab kita respect dia. Okay, untuk low power distance pula dia kontra lah dengan high power distance. Kalau tadi high power distance dia ada big gap di antara yang yang top dengan yang paling rendah. Kalau low power distance ni dia tak ada gap ataupun small gap lah. Small gap between the weak and powerful. Firm tend to talk, uh, toward flat organization, organizational structure with relatively equal relations between managers and workers. Okay, for example, Scandinavian countries instituted various systems to ensure social economic equality. So, untuk low power distance ni pula, dia tak ada gap. Maknanya, uh, you dengan you punya boss, you boleh tegur you punya boss. Uh, macam tak, uh, apa, dengan CEO pun, CEO pun kerap turun padang, sama-sama. Uh, dia, uh, dia ada flat organization. Kalau uh, high power distance ni, uh, dia punya structure ataupun uh, company structure dia akan biasanya tinggi lah macam um, atas ada CEO, bawah CEO ada uh, vice, uh, no, atas ada president, bawah president ada vice president, bawah vice president ada CEO, bawah CEO ada pula COO lah, CFO lah, so bawah tu ada pula um, director, pasal ada pula deputy director and so on, so itu tall structure. So sebab itulah high power distance. Maknanya daripada presiden tu nak pergi ke bawah uh, pekerja yang biasa ni uh, macam hello, hello, hello. Uh, jauh kan? Uh, tak sampai. Okay. So untuk low power distance country pula macam 
Scandinavian like uh, Northern Europe ataupun uh, Denmark, Norway dan juga Sweden uh, dia ada low power system. Okay, number three kita ada uncertainty avoidant. Okay, apa yang dimasukkan dengan uncertainty avoidant? Refer to the extent to which people can tolerate risk and uncertainty in their life. Okay, ada uh, countries yang dia boleh tolerate risk. Maknanya dia boleh uh, dia, dia dia boleh hadap risk. Uh, ada certain countries yang dia sangat-sangat tak boleh tak boleh nak consider risk. Bagi dia kalau uh, kalau boleh kita nak buat benda tu perfect, jangan bagi ada masalah. Uh, tak nak ada benda-benda yang tak pasti. Kena make sure benda tu macam pastikan benda tu uh, contoh kalau jadi A, kalau tak jadi A, apa akan jadi. Uh, okay. So, untuk country yang ada high uncertainty avoidance, okay. Uh, high uncertainty avoidance society create institution to minimize risk and ensure security. Ah uh, maknanya high uncertainty avoidance ni dia akan kalau boleh dia tak nak pun ada risk tu. Ah uh, kalau boleh kita minimalkan risk tu, lepas tu kita make sure kita selamat, ah uh, make sure ada backup plan, apa yang kita kena buat kalau tak jadi, lepas tu nak kena yalah macam tu. Okay, firm emphasize stable careers and regulate workers action. Decisions are made slowly. Ah, okay, biasanya bila nak buat decision ni, sebabkan dia nak dia tak boleh nak tolerate risk, dia tak boleh nak accept risk. Jadi bila dia nak buat keputusan, biasanya dia lambatlah nak buat keputusan tu sebab banyak benda yang dia kena fikir. Buat dia kata kalau dia accept uh, offer ni apa akan jadi, kalau tak accept apa akan jadi, pasu nak buat apa nanti. Ah, uh, itu untuk high uncertainty avoidant. Untuk low uncertainty avoidant. Uh, managers are relatively entrepreneurial and comfortable with risk. Okay, so entrepreneurial ni uh, adalah sikap uh, entrepreneur lah. Biasanya bila dia buat sesuatu kerja tu, uh, dia comfortable with risk, dia boleh buat keputusan dengan cepat. People are comfortable in changing job. Tak ada masalah untuk dia macam, kalau dia tak puas hati, never mind, uh, I just quit, uh, resign my job. Lepas tu dia boleh pergi tempat lain, dia tak kisah. Uh, Tiba-tiba uh, tak ada duit ke, tak ada gaji ke. Uh, ini untuk low uncertainty avoidant. Maknanya dia okey je dengan risk. Tak ada masalah. Uh, so untuk country yang high uncertainty avoidant yang, yang yang kalau boleh dia avoid risk ni contoh Belgium, France and Japan. Untuk country yang uh, boleh sangat open kepada risk, uh, dia boleh buat keputusan yang cepat like Ireland, Jamaica and US. Okay, then kita ada number four. Okay, sebab tadi ada overall there are six dimension kan dalam hostet. Nah, ni number four. Masculinity versus femininity. Okay, refers to a society orientation based on traditional male and female value. Okay, untuk uh, masculine culture, value competitiveness, ambition, assertiveness and the accumulation of wealth. Both men and women are assertive. Focus on career and earning money. Ha, ini untuk culture yang very ambitious lah. Ha, dia sangat kompetitif, sangat uh, semangat untuk dapatkan duit, uh, kumpul harta. Uh, sama je lelaki dengan perempuan pun sama. Uh, very assertive. Assertive ni agresif dan juga dia uh, aktif lah. Okay. So contoh country adalah Australia and Japan. Then kita ada feminine culture. Okay, feminine culture pula kalau tadi very ambitious, very competitive. Contrast with feminine culture, kita ada uh, whereby uh, the culture emphasize nurturing roles, interdependent among people, caring for less fortunate people, for both men and women. Maknanya dekat sini, dia tak kisah sangat kalau uh, macam uh, tak kisah pasal wealth accumulation, tak kisah nak cari harta sangat asalkan Um, kita saling bantu membantu antara satu sama lain kita saling uh, tolong menolong saling uh, bantu orang yang memerlukan ini adalah feminine culture so contoh adalah Scandinavian countries apa itu Scandinavian countries country Denmark Norway dan juga Sweden ha uh, okey contoh kat sini uh, where welfare system are highly developed and education is subsidized ha uh, sebab itulah ada orang Suka pergi Norway sebab kalau pergi Norway dia punya education dia free Lepas tu uh, banyak banyak uh, welfare lah yang boleh dapat uh, Contohnya macam kerajaan dia banyak bagi peruntukan untuk uh, uh, dia punya ni Dia punya 
masyarakat dia uh, untuk hidup secara aman. Okay, and then kita ada long term versus short term orientation. Untuk long term orientation is the long view in planning and living. Focusing on years and decade. Uh, ini yang dia merancang dalam waktu yang panjang lah. Okay, ada juga yang merancang uh, uh, short term orientation. Okay, yang mana dia rancang dalam waktu yang terdekat. Okay, and then last but not least is indulgent versus restraint. Okay, indulgent members of indulgent society allow relatively free gratification of their basic and natural human desire related to having fun and generally enjoying life. Sekejap eh. Okay, so maknanya untuk uh, indulgent country ni Uh, dia biasanya uh, dia suka reward, dia bagi reward dekat dia punya society, uh, okay, dia enjoying life, okay. Untuk restrain uh, culture pula, restrain society believe that such gratification should be curbed and regulated by strict norm. Uh, ini pula untuk uh, negara ataupun culture yang dia fokus buat apa yang dibuat je. Uh, dia tak nak macam, uh, macam having, uh, enjoying life, okay. So, contoh untuk country yang score high in indulgent is uh, Adema, Mexico and the US. Untuk country yang for, uh, yang skor tinggi kepada restraint ni, China, Iraq, South Korea. So, maknanya kalau you uh, business in China ataupun Iraq ataupun South Korea, you, so you kena faham lah kalau orang macam tak berapa bagi reward sangat uh, sebab dia just fokus uh, apa strict norm. Fokus on kerja je macam tu. Okay. Alright. Okay. Itu untuk uh, apa nama dia? Hostet lah. Hostet ada enam tadi. Kita ada individualism versus collectivism. Ada uh, power distance. Ada uncertainty, uncertainty avoidance. Ada masculinity versus femininity. Ada long term versus short term uh, orientation. And also indulgent and uh, indulgent versus restrain. Okay, so uh, itu habislah offset. Offset ada enam sahaja. Then kita ada deal versus relationship orientation. Okay, in deal oriented, oriented culture, manager focus on the task at hand. Are impersonal, typically use contracts and want to just get down to business. Okay, ada juga culture yang deal. Memang dia tak fokus kepada hubungan, relationship. Dia fokus kepada Uh, benda yang dia kena buat. Uh, contoh dia negara macam Australia, Northern Europe and also North America. And then ada juga country yang fokus kepada relationship oriented. Dia value kepada people, repo and getting to know the other party in business interaction. Uh, biasanya dia akan build a good business repo dulu barulah dia uh, proceed dengan buat business agreement. Contoh China, Japan and also Latin American countries. Okay, Guanxi. Ah, uh, Guanxi is very important in business in China. Refer to social connection and relationship based on mutual benefit. Okay, emphasize reciprocal exchange of favor as well as mutual obligation. Okay. Okay, ni contoh ah uh, beza antara national culture dan juga professional culture. Ah, uh, itu national culture macam yang kita dah belajar ni. And then corporate culture. Ah, uh, yang inilah sebelah sini. Okay, and last but not least, kita ada managerial orientation. Okay, managerial orientation ada tiga. Three managerial orientation, kita ada ethnocentric orientation whereby using our own culture as the standard for judging other culture. Okay, ethnocentric orientation ni yang mana dia dia sangat bangga dengan country asal dia. Ha, so, uh, kalau dia pasta, dia nak jual barang pun, uh, macam mana dia jual barang dekat dalam negara dia. Contoh, dia Malaysia lah. Macam mana dia jual barang dari dalam Malaysia, begitu jugalah barang yang sama dia akan jual kepada negara luar. Maknanya, uh, kalau dia barang tu sesuai kepada Malaysian culture, dia akan jual barang yang sama kepada Japanese culture ataupun American culture. Itu ethnocentric orientation yang mana dia uh, value dia based on dia punya own culture. Okay. Untuk polycentric orientation pula, dia ada mindset yang mana dia develop a greater affinity for the country in which he or she works than 
for the home country. Yang ini pula, contoh uh, kita uh, uh, saya orang Malaysia, saya bekerja dekat Jepun. Uh, so dekat dekat uh, masa saya kerja dekat Jepun tu, saya sangat menghargai uh, Japanese culture. So saya akan uh, come out dengan produk uh, yang ada Japanese culture lah punya elemen. Contoh, itu untuk polycentric orientation yang mana saya tak Uh, gunakan Malaysian culture dalam produk saya tapi saya gunakan Japanese culture sebab saya berniaga dekat Jepun dekat Japan so I must I must follow uh, Japanese culture that is polycentric orientation okay number three is geocentric orientation a global mindset in which the manager is able to understand a business or market without regard to national boundaries manager should strive for a geocentric orientation okay geocentric orientation ni pula yang mana produk itu adalah dia ada global mindset. Maknanya kalau kita nak jual produk, produk tu can be used in different culture. Maknanya uh, tak ada macam elemen, uh, elemen nampak macam elemen uh, Jepun sikit, tak ada nampak macam elemen Arab, tak ada nampak macam elemen Western, tak ada. Standardized uh, punya pattern lah. Uh, so as a manager, you should strive for the geocentric orientation. Sebab apa? Bila you focus kepada geocentric orientation, you boleh Uh, market the product uh, towards uh, many countries compared to polycentric. Kalau polycentric ni maknanya you just focus kepada host country tu sahaja. Uh, tapi untuk ethnocentric pula you focus kepada home country sahaja. So dua-dua pun tak okay sangat lah. Uh, tapi ada uh, pro and cons lah. Alright. Okay that's all for the class. Okay. Um, okay so I end, I end our lecture. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so kalau ada apa-apa yang tak faham, uh, boleh je nak tanya. Alright, thank you. Assalamualaikum.